Hi, Assalamualaikum and good day everyone. My name is Muhammad Amal Fitri Ben Ani. My metric number is 64620 and today we are from group 4. We would like to discuss about the Imaginalist School 5 Major Question and Contribution of William Stanley Jevons and Theonis Agustin Cornot and Francis White Edwards in developing the ideas of that school. Right, so we move to first part which is introduction. The Imaginalist School actually began in 1871 when Jevon and Majors published their influential book on Imaginal Utility Theory. And several foreigner, which is Anthony Cronaut and Julius Deputz, predated them in the use of Imaginal Analysis in Economy. Several second generation Imaginalists, which is Edwards and Clark, expanded their theory further. This school eventually become part of neoclassical economy or contemporary microeconomy. Thus, this assignment will discuss about five major questions and contribution of Cornot, Javon and Edwards in developing the ideas of that school. Alright, so we move to the second part which is historical background. Serious economic and social problems remain unsolved even a hundred years after the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. Such as, for example, number one, poverty was widespread, atrocious productivity was increasing. Second, the extremely uneven distribution of income created mass dissipation, even though the general standard of living was rising. Third, Business fluctuation affected many people which individuals could not longer depend on their own initiative and ability to overcome their condition. And folks, farmer and farm labor had their difficulties and caused them to migrate into cities to find works. And fifth, the longest working hour, dangerous and unhealthy working condition and rise of monopolistic power made people to find solutions beyond classical economic thinking. Thus, the trend of 19th century in Europe was to develop three approaches to overcome social problems, which is the first one is to promote socialism, second to, to bolster trade unionism, and third is to, to demand government intervention in the economy. However, the Imaginalists oppose all those three solutions and they support the classical school, which is laissez faire. There are 10 major tenets in this section, which is number one is to focus on the margin, number two, rational economic behavior, number three, microeconomic emphasis, number four, the use of the abstract deductive method. Number five, the pure competition emphasis. Number six, demand oriented price theory. Number seven, emphasis on subject utility. Number eight, equilibrium approach. Number nine, measures of land with capital good. And number ten is minimal government involvement. Number one, focus on the margin. Focus on the margins mean that focus it attention on the point of change where decisions are made or in the other words on the margin. The marginalist extended to all economic theory the marginal principle that David Ricardo, which is classical school, developed in his theory of France. Number two rational economic behavior. The marginalists assume that people act rationally in balancing marginal benefit MB and marginal cost MC, pleasures and pain and in balancing present against future needs. They also assume that purposeful behavior is normal and typical and that random abnormalities will cancel each other out. The approach employed by the marginalists has its roots in the words of Jeremy Bentham, which is a utilism, and the, they assume that the dominant drive of human action is to seek utility and avoid this utility, which is negative utility. 
Nombor 3, Microeconomic Emphasis The individual person and firm take center stage in the marginalist drama. Instead of considering the aggregate economy or macroeconomy, the marginalist considered an individual decision making market condition for a single type of good, the outputs of specific firm, and so forth. My name is Muhammad Zahruddin Ben Ramli. My matrix number is 263131. Okay, I will be continue the major tenant. The fourth major tenant is the use of abstract deductive method. The deductive approach is to test the theory which is start from the theory, hypothesis, data and confirmation. The marginalists rejected the historical method by German historical school because they, uh, <coughs> they agree more in the abstract and deductive approach pioneered by the Ricardo in classical school. Ricardo began with basic premises and then used logic to deduce generalizes <coughs> generalization. His tendency is to use restrictive assumption to bolster his arguments. The method of partial equilibrium analysis championed by many members of marginalist school was useful for abstracting from the complexity of the real world in, uh, in order to better understand it. This satirist variable approach is allowing one variable at a time to change while holding all other variables temporarily constant. This satirical variables enable the investigators to dissect complex phenomenon one step at a time. This problem of the immensely complicated society with its countless variables was terribly, terribly simplified and penetrated in orderly and systematic manner. The first major tenant is the pure competition emphasis. So, pure competition is known as perfect competition. The marginalists normally base their analysis on the assumption of pure competition. T is the work of more individualistic, independent, entrepreneurs, numerous buyers, many sellers, homogeneous products, uniform prices, and no advertising because for product are seen. Uh, no person often has enough economic power to influence market prices perceptibly because they are selling homogeneous products. So if the firm will increase the price of products, consumer will move to another firm to get a similar product. Individuals, individuals can adapt their own action to demand, supply and price through the interaction of thousands of people. Next is demand oriented price theory. In classical, economy emphasize supply as the significant determinant of price. The marginalists swam to the opposite extreme and emphasize demand as the significant determinant of price. In neoclassical neo school, emphasize both supply and demand as the significant determinant of price. After that is emphasis on subjective utility. According to marginalist school, demand depends on marginal utility, which is a subjective physiological phenomenon. Marginal utility, MU, is the additional utility a person receives from consuming an additional unit of a particular good. MU is chain in total utility divided by the chain in the quantity consumed of the good. 
the eighth major tenet is equilibrium approach. The Marginalists believe that economic forces generally tend toward equilibrium. Equilibrium is the intersection point between the demand and supply curve. Whenever disturbances cause this location, new movements toward equilibrium occur. Next is merger of land with capital goods. The marginalists lump land and capital resources together in their analysis and spot of interest, rent and profit as being the return to property resources. This had its advantage analytically and also combat the conclusion drawn by some that land rent is unearned income and an unnecessary payment in order to ensure the use of land. Marginalists generally couple the reward to the land donor which interest theory. The last major tenant is minimal government involvement. The Marginalists continue the classical school's defense of minimal government involvement in the economy as the most desirable policy. In most cases, no interference with natural economic laws was in order if maximum social benefits were to be realized. The next question is whom did the marginalists benefit or seek to benefit? Generally, uh, it is a beneficial to all parties by providing a better understanding on how the free market system can allocate resources more efficiently and promotes economic liberty rather than clarification by a classical school. As specifically, workers by showing that workers receive wages that are equal to their contribution help count help counter the Marxian call for revolution by the proletariat law of motion theory. To through resisted chains, benefit to who are interested in maintaining their status quo. Employers by opposing union and by attributing unemployment to wages that were artificially higher and inflexibly downward. Lamb downers defend lamb load against attacks based on Ricardian rent theory, wealthy people by oppose to government intervention that might redistribute income. How was the marginalist school really useful or correct in its time? Development of geometric diagrams and mathematical techniques. Development of new and powerful tool of analysis, especially geometric diagrams and mathematical techniques. Economics become more access social science. Next, the importance of demand in determining price. <coughs> Condition of demand were given their rightful importance as one set of determinants for price of both final goods and factor of production. Classical economy emphasized only on supply cost of production as the significant determinant of extreme value price. The use of assumption in economic analysis. Popularizing the concept of assumption in the economy contrary to the classical school which neglected the assumption in study.
Assalamualaikum. My name Wan Izati binti Wan Muhammad Taila. My material number 261574. Okay, now I will continue with the point how was the marginalized school valid, useful or correct it is time. As we know the marginalized school developed a new and powerful tools of analysis especially in geometry diagram and the mathematical technical. So, the partial equilibrium analysis is one of the method of how the marginalist school valid, useful, or correct in this time. This is because the partial equilibrium analysis championed by many members of this school was useful for abstracting from the complexity of the real world. Okay, this approach is allowed uh, one variable at the time to change will holding all others variable temporary constant. So, uh, this analysis also enable the investigator to desert complete phenomena one step at a time. So, we can see that the problem of immensely complicated society which is uh, countless variables was thereby simplified and penetrated in an orderly and systematic manner. So, as the marginalist introduced consensus variables, uh, they eventually approach a more realistic situation. Okay, the last point is about the uh, microeconomy approach. Okay, that is the certain which is not neglecting the individual economy unique or the small sector of economy. So, the microeconomy approach of the marginalist uh, complement the macroeconomy approach, which uh, may overlook the many problems by viewing the economy as a whole. So, for example, the first we can see the certain group of the people may become increasingly impoverished uh, when the average area per capita income for the nation may be rising. So, the second example, we can see the business uh, circle is of a prime importance to the probability of a large automobile, automobile company, but uh, to the owner of a conventional grocery store, the business uh, circle is relatively less important than the opening of the uh, competing store down the street. So, and the third uh, about the aggregate analysis tell us that the investment in some uh, form of the human capital, for example, uh, college education, they pay, pay the highest return than the sum investment in the physical capital. So that a banker may be uh, justified is not the lending money to an individual to go to college unless uh, the government guarantee the loan. So in the case, uh, the banker sim simply simplified that there has no collateral uh, against which uh, to make the loan. So this is very clearly the microeconomic approach of marginalists has an important place in the economy theory. Okay, now we go to see which tenor of the marginalized school, marginalized school become lasting contribution. Okay, the first is a marginalist and neoclassical employment theory. So, uh, in this, Kinnas point to the ele elegant fallacy of the composition associated with marginalist and neoclassical employment theory. So, if a firm were to cut the wages, it costs expand its market by selling more goods at a lower price. So, uh, the decline uh, in purchasing power among its own employers will not affect it because they will normally buy only a negligible portion of its output. However, if all employers were to cut wages, they might find their market shrinking rather than the expanding. Okay, next, the second uh, tenets of the marginalist school become lasting contribution is uh, pure, e pure competition. Okay, uh, critics argue the assumption of the pure competition was a reasonable abstraction looking backward from the uh, 1870, but it was too restrictive to be useful as competition declined after the years. So today, the pure economy, pure competition can be found in uh, only a few sectors of the economy. 
so institutionalist economics contact that a historical and institutional factor dominated rational individual calculation in the determining such as the length of the work days consumer consumer behavior wages rate so this assumption become outdated as a new event transpired and new economy theories developed Okay, next, the tenets of the marginalist school become lasting contribution because the marginalist um, fail to explain the economic growth and business circle and they also use the deductive method. So, the analysis of the thinker originally used the deductive method was stated, timeless and unsubstated with empirical evidence. So, uh, this deductive method is the challenge by inductive method that we uh, can learn in a German historical school. So, there were a few attempts uh, at inductive verification of the theory. So, in fact, uh, hypotheses often uh, were framed in a way that frequent testing. So, the business circle will generally ignore in the firm conviction that supply create uh, its own demand and therefore the full employment is the rule. So the, the school failed to explain the economic growth and its theory proved to be inadequate for the slowly development country. Okay, to become the lasting contribution, uh, even uh, despite the criticisms, many of the marginalized theories they can be found in our textbook, in our principle of economy and microeconomy textbook. So, among the contribution of the school, uh, we still learn until now is mathematical economy, the basic monopoly model, a theory of duopology, and the theory of diminishing marginal utility, the theory of rational consumer choice, and the law of demand, the law of diminishing marginal return. Okay, there is the three important economics or marginalists we need to know. Anthony Augusti Cornot. William Stanley Jevons, Francis Y. Edward. Okay, now let's we go through one by one about our uh, economies. Okay, the first is Anthony Augusti Cornot. Anthony Augusti Cornot was born at Grey and died in Paris, France at age 75. He was a French mathematician who published three thesis on mathematical philosophy and economics. And he also the was, was the first economics to develop concise mathematical model of pure monopoly, duopoly, and pure competition, but his pioneering work was neglected until after his death, when Jevons, Marshall, and Fisher continued his work. So, Carnot uh, also developed the early complete model of what we need refer to as the derived demand for resources. Carnot is considered to be a forerunner to the marginalist school, become much of the analysis focus on the rate of the change of the total cost and revenue function. So, uh, his contribution to economy analysis in in theory of poor monopoly and theory of duopoly. The second economist is William Stanley Jevons. William Stanley Jevons are born in Liverpool, England. Jevons studied in the chemi chemistry and bot uh, botany at the University College London. But because the uh, bankrupt of his father's business in 1847, Jevon leave his study to take up the position of essayer in the Australia. So he remained there for the five years and when he returned to England, uh, he then resumed his study at the UCL. So the publisher several books on logic and become professor of the logic, political, economy and philosophy at the Manchester and later at the University College London. So, uh, he invented a logic machine as he waited before the Royal Society in 1870. F so, he also famous as a historian of science and more outstanding contribution to development of the index number. So, Jevon was extremely introverted 
and did not have great influence influence uh, on his immediate immediate per or student. Okay, now let we see the theory by Anthony Agusti Cornot. Okay, we have uh, two theory. The first one is monopoly theory, and the second one is duopoly theory. Okay. Cornet is accredited with being the first economist to derive the now familiar proposition that a firm can maximize the profit by setting the price. Okay, which are the marginal revenue must equal to marginal cost. We know as the MR equal to MC. So the Cornet is assumed that the total cost uh, and therefore the marginal cost of obtaining the mineral water is zero. This is the example, because uh, the because in the case the to the total profit will be maximized at the quantity of output where the total revenue, uh, p p times q, which price time quantity is the greatest. So, uh, using the calculus, Cornot point out the the quantity is aware the derivative of the total revenue function. This marginal revenue is zero. So, for example, uh, we can see in the first graph, first graph, the proprietor of the mineral water face a downward sloping demand curve. Uh, is D, the mineral revenue, the marginal revenue curve MR is below the demand curve because the lower price uh, apply to the all liter of the mineral water. Not just the extra one sol. That is, uh, each additional unit sol will add the own price of the total revenue. So the extra, but the extra unit had not been uh, offered for the sale. The price received on the other liter will have been higher. Okay, second one is the theory of duopoly. Theory of duopoly: a market in which a two firm compute was the first formal attempt by an economist to analyze the conduct, conduct and performance of the seller in an oligopolistic market structure. So in formulation, uh, his theory of duopoly, Cornet assumed that the buyers name the price and the two sellers merely adjust their output uh, to, to the price. So each duopolis estimate the total demand of the product and set his own value of the output and sell on the assumption that the river output remain fixed. Okay, a stable equilibrium is achieved touch a step-by-step -step adaption of the output by each duopolis ultimately utim selling, selling equal quantity of the goods at a price that is uh, above above the competitive price and below the monopoly one. Okay, next, uh, we look about the value theory by uh, William Stanley Jevons. Okay, Jevons state that uh, value depends entirely upon utility. Okay, labor determine value but only in an indirect manner. By varying the degree of the utility of community touch and increase or limited of the supply. Okay, so the specific level of utility associated with the per depends on the number of per and pupil presently processed. Okay, Javan uh, believe that the per have the value because the buyers get the utility from them. But it's unlike Ricardo in the classical school who may say that the per have value because the people need to dip for them as the cost of the production. So to explain the Javan's uh, value theory, we must therefore the begin with uh, his theory of the law of the diminishing marginal utility. So then our attention will turn to his related notion of the relational consumer behavior, individual, market exchange, and the optimal amount of the world. Okay, um, my name Nurul Shafika Binti Abdullah, number metric 261550. Okay, I will discuss about Chevron's own value theory. Chevron's have four theory. 
Second is theory of diminishing marginal utility. Uh, second is rational choice, the equimarginal rule. Uh, third is uh, theory of actions. And four is uh, chevrons of labor. Okay, I will discuss detail about theory one uh, is theory of diminishing marginal utility. Okay, utility cannot be measured directly uh, at least with the tool at hand uh, because utility can be estimated only by observing human behavior and noting human preference. Okay, Jeffons uh, reject any app step to compare the intensity of pleasure and pain among different people. Okay, I will uh, discuss a uh, law of diminishing marginal utility based on the graph. Uh, the upper graph show the total utility TU that uh, that a consumer receive from each quality quantity of community X, and the uh, uh, lower graph show the marginal utility MU or the change in total utility has each unit of the community is added. Okay, marginal utility which is equivalent to Jeffons final degree of utility decline has more of community X is consumed. Okay, based on the graph, uh, we can show the re relationship between marginal utility MU and total utility TU okay when a uh, total utility has increased uh, marginal uh, marginal utility will positive um, and second uh, when total utility has maximum um, ma uh, so marginal utility will equal to zero okay the second theory is rational choice the equal marginal rule Okay, Chevron's applied the notion of final utility to formulate a general theory of rational choice. Let's assume that there are two communities, uh, which is X and Y, and the price of the two communities is the same regardless of use. Okay, uh, based on according to uh, Chevron's, the consumer wishes uh, to maximize utility will allocate money income in such a way that the marginal utility of the last dollar spent on all community is equal. Okay, to more understand about the theory, we can see the equation MUX over PS larger than MUY over PY. Okay, uh, I can explain, explain about the equation. Uh, if the ratio of the marginal utility of x to its price is larger than that for y, then the rational consumer will purchase more of x and less of y. So, marginal utility will uh, decrease and marginal utility uh, of x to its price also will decrease. So, uh, consumer will continue continue to buy goods X until marginal utility of X to price equal to marginal utility of Y to its price. Okay, if the marginal utility of X to price are less than marginal utility of Y to its price, uh, so, the rational consumer will purchase more of Y and less, less of X. So, marginal utility of Y will decrease and marginal utility of uh, Y to its price also will decrease. So, consumer, consumer will continue to buy goods uh, Y until marginal utility of y to its price equal to marginal utility um, uh, um, marginal utility of x to its price. Consumer total utility uh, is maximized when uh, the marginal ut utility of x to its price equal to marginal utility of y to its price. Okay, uh, third theory is theory of actions. 
uh, based on Jeffon. Jeffon used this principle of utility maximization to explain the gains from exchange. Uh, assume there are only two situations, which is A only has beef and B only has cone. For example, uh, how the exchange of beef and cones will benefit A and B. Okay, A will benefit by obtaining cones and giving up a uh, beef uh, because A has only beef. So, marginal utility uh, of beef to its price less than marginal utility of cones to its price. And second is B will benefit by obtaining beef and giving up cones because B have only cones. So, marginal utility of cones to its price less than marginal utility of uh, beef to its price. Okay, the last theory is Jeffons on labor. Recall that Jeffons has utility to be the determinant of actions value. At one place or in the principle, uh, Jeffons formulate this idea. Uh, cost of production determinant will uh, supply. Supply will determinant of final degree uh, of utility. Final degree of ut utility will determinant of value. Uh, we can show the diagram. MUE is uh, marginal ut utility of the earnings, and MDUW is marginal ut this utility of work. Uh, above line OX uh, measure pleasure utility, and below line OX measure pains this utility. Uh, at the beginning of the working day, labor is usually more irksome than later in the day when the worker adjusts adjust, adjust to it. Thus, uh, there is neither pleasure or pain uh, at the point B and C on the curve labor M M D U W, uh, which is uh, marginal disutility of work. And there is a sure uh, pleasure from working independently of the earning. Between uh, those two points, Bayot uh, C, uh, however, the pain marginal disutility uh, of additional work increase. Uh, at the point M, where QM equal to DM, the pleasure gains from the earnings associated with the last unit of the work is exactly equal to the pain of the labor, which is MUE equal to MD, MDUW. As a result, M uh, equal uh, is the optimal amount of the work that a worker can earn in the workday. My name is Nisha Anak Perempuan Chandran, metric number 261950. I'm going to present about Francis Y. Edward. Francis Y. Edward was born in Ireland. He studied at Trinity College in Dublin and also Oxford University. Francis Y. Edward was a top professor of political economy at Oxford. He was one of the founders of the Royal Economy Society and also was an editor of the Economic Journal for 35 years. He served a term as president of the Statistical Society and a fellow of the British Academics. His contribution was found in his Mathematical Physics, an article under title paper relating to political. Other than that, his contribution to modern economics was the use of mathematics within discipline. For indifferent curve and exchange, Edward draw his indifferent curve and use this graph to analyze an isolated exchange between two sole processors of product, which is Robinson Crusoe that has money for X1 and his right man Friday has labor for X2. Friday, of course, desire some of Crusoe money and Crusoe desire to have the use of some of Friday labor. The indifferent curve 1, 2 and 3 represent Friday indifferent map which if further to the east 
an indifferent curve for Roman number 1, 2 and 3 represent Crusoe indifferent map which is further to the north. Other than that, contract curve is obtained when Crusoe map overlapping on Friday map which is tangency point of two different curves. Edward concludes that the price of Friday level in terms of Crusoe money is subject to bargaining. Why is this so? Edward's answer is that all points other than those on the line ABC, either Friday or Crusoe, can add to his utility without lessening the utility gaining by the other parties. This can be seen by noting point D on Crusoe in different curve 1 and Friday in different curve 1. Crusoe can attain curve 3 rather than 1 at A which is still leaving Friday on his indifferent curve 1. Or we can look from Friday perspective, Friday can achieve the higher utility associated with his indifferent curve at C without reducing Crusoe utility that remain on curve 1. Next, the self-interest of the two traders will push them to the contract curve. Friday, of course, would prefer C on this curve because it would place him on indifferent curve 3, but Crusoe would prefer A because that would provide him more utility than at either point B or C. The final contract between the two traders in, the, in this case is indetermined. Any point on the contract curve is possible point of equilibrium. And the final outcome will occur through bargaining. Next, for marginal product versus average product, the relationship between TP, MP and AP for a competitive firm operating in the short run with two input which is the variable resources labor and the fixed resources capital. For graph A, show a short run production function and graph B show the, the MP and AP of labor that correspond with the TP curve show in graph A. MP is the change in TP associated with a change in the labor input which can be found by drawing a straight line such as MM prime tangent to the TP curve at any point and then determine the slope of the line. AP can be found by drawing a straight line from the origin to end any point on the TP curve and then finding the slope of the line drawn. In the graph, it helps us visualize Edward Dinsch. In the graph, it helps us visualize Edward distinction between TP, MP, and AP. Notice that when TP is rising at an increasing rate, MP is rising and is above AP. Because MP bigger than AP, AP is also rising whenever a number that is greater than the average is added to a total, the average might also rise. But once the TP rise at a decreasing rate, MP fall, that is, diminishing marginal return occur. Eventually, MP fall below the AP, thus pulling the average down. This Relationships are of greater importance in contemporary microeconomics theory. For example, they explain the shape of short-run cost curve for typical firm are the basic for the marginal productivity theory of the demand for resources and underline the marginal productivity theory of income distribution. For conclusion, Beginning of the marginalist school is at 1871. William Stanley Lee, Javon and Carl Maker published their books on marginal utility theories. The marginalist school opposed the socialist ideology and government intervention in the economy but 
we embrace the use of laser sphere system. Generally, this school sought to advance the interests of all humankind through promoting a better understanding on how a market system efficiently as allocated resources and promote economic liberty. Although the marg marginalist school has witnessed, the theory can be found in contemporary textbook on principle of economics and microeconomics. Marginal analysis applied to whole microeconomics. Progress in mathematization of economics only input to the new era of economic thinking which is produce a complete and consistent new microeconomic theory. So, marginalist was only transitory period between classic and neoclassic school.